Live from Washington, D.C. Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. Hey, welcome to Jay Secchio Live. This is Jordan Secchio. You will not believe this. Heading into domestic issues and, of course, uh, the fight against the abortion giant, the abortion industry, including Planned Parenthood, and this time the largest abortion clinic in Ohio, in Cleveland, Ohio, which has launched an advertising campaign. If you're watching on Facebook and Periscope, you can see one of the billboards they've already put up in Cleveland that says, get this, how sickening is this? Abortion is good medicine. How about abortion is necessary? Think about that. Abortion is right for me. They get worse. Abortion is a parenting decision. Parenting. You mean not to be a parent, to kill your child. Abortion is liberty, except for that child in the womb who will have no liberty and their liberty taken away. Abortion is normal. That's what they want this to become. But we know it's not normal and we know the effects of it are not normal. Abortion is a family value. Except for you're destroying the family. That child in the womb will never have a chance at having a father or mother or brothers and sisters or aunts and uncles and grandparents. They'll never have that family experience. They're destroying families. But this is even when it gets to that, you know, they worship at the altar of abortion. I know it sounds strong. Abortion is a blessing. Abortion is sacred. Abortion is safer than childbirth. I mean, think about that. Abortion as a sacred blessing. Now, this is a campaign put forward by the largest abortion clinic in Ohio. It's in Cleveland. But Planned Parenthood is endorsing this campaign. So you see how these abortion giants all work together. They're tweeting it out, sending the messages out about this. Uh, My wife actually saw this in the news as we were traveling back last week. You knew I was out of the studio last week. We had just got home, and uh, she'd see this story as we were in the car on the way back. It said, I can't believe this. I want to write something about it. So we've got a blog up. Uh, from Anna at ACLJ.org, which, so if you're not watching the show on Facebook and Periscope, you can see the imagery, you can see Planned Parenthood's tweets about it, and our response. It is outrageous, folks, and get this, by the way, the government is now the single largest funding source of Planned Parenthood. That's in a new report out today. We'll get into that as well. Share this broadcast with your friends and family because you're going to find out a lot of information here about the funding to Planned Parenthood about how the abortion industry is kind of trying to be on the offensive and the language and how we're combating it at the American Center for Law and Justice. We've had a victory in the uh, federal uh, circuit courts just recently on this very issue of forced speech. Uh, We'll talk about that as well. So we're fighting for life. The government is now the single largest funding source of Planned Parenthood revenue. Quoting Planned Parenthood, government health services reimbursements and grants constituted the largest source of funding for Planned Parenthood in 2016-2017, providing 37% of the organization's revenue. You know how much that was? $543.7 million. More than half a billion dollars of our money going to Planned Parenthood, and they believe abortion is a sacred blessing. Folks, you can get involved. We have a petition to stop the shutdown of pro-life pregnancy centers. We are in all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court right now. You can sign that petition at aclj.org. So get involved in the fight back against big abortion. Stand with the pro-life pregnancy centers doing that incredible work. aclj.org. Sign the petition today as we head to the U.S. Supreme Court. We'll be right back. The stage is set at the U.S. Supreme Court, where we are battling big abortion. At the American Center for Law and Justice, it's our sacred duty to defend unborn babies. We have two massive pro-life cases pending at the Supreme Court. One could save countless babies. The other could devastate the abortion industry. Now, Big Abortion is trying to force pro-life pregnancy centers to promote free taxpayer-funded abortions or be shut down. In that case, we have just filed one of the most important pro-life briefs ever at the Supreme Court to save babies. It's a critical time in the fight for life, and we could not be on the front lines at the Supreme Court without your generous support. 
Stand with the ACLJ now. Support the pro-life work of the American Center for Law and Justice. It's easy to make that happen. Go online, make a gift at aclj.org. Thank you for your support. Hey, welcome back to Jay Seculo Live. This is Jordan Seculo. So there is a campaign launched by the largest abortion clinic in Ohio. It's in Cleveland, Ohio. The name of the abortion clinic, Pre-Term. How, how rich is that? Pre-Term. Unfortunately, in 2014, a woman died at this clinic after a botched abortion procedure. But that hasn't stopped the abortion uh, uh, provider and clinic, the largest in the state of Ohio, a big state, from launching an advertising campaign through myabortionmylife.org. It's it's uh, things like abortion is necessary, abortion is right for me, abortion is a parenting decision. Uh, but then, you know, I think you know it goes from the kind of political talking points that I would call those of the pro-abortion uh, movement that are kind of uh, what we expect. Abortion is liberty. Not liberty for that unborn child in the womb. Certainly not. It's taking away their right to life. Uh, which is constitutionally uh, protected uh, by our, uh, again, our founding documents. I mean, again, when you think of the Declaration of Independence, you think about the right to life, uh, that's being taken away. Abortion being a family value. How absurd is that when you're taking away that child's right to even have the family experience? But then it gets into the religious language, sacred. Abortion's sacred. And that it is also uh, not only just sacred, but uh, good medicine, good medicine. Yeah. Doctors, I thought, took a, a Hippocratic oath to save lives, not in lives for money. You realize these abortionists kill for, for dollars. They kill for money. Uh, doesn't seem like uh, this. that's good medicine based off the Hippocratic oath they take. And then even more discussion is that abortion is a blessing. So we've got, got a blog up about this at aclj.org and a case a um, uh, couple case updates. So we're getting active here. We've got a major pro-life appellate court victory in the Fourth Circuit. Uh, the Fourth Circuit says that a city cannot force pro-abortion speech. Uh, for years, the free speech rights of pro-life pregnancy centers have been under vigorous attack with the aid and support of groups like NADRAL, Pro-Choice America. State and local governments have been imposing on pro-life centers, so pro-life centers, a requirement that they post a notice saying either that they do not offer abortions or or that the government will pay for eligible women to have an abortion. So they're, they're going to they're force pro-life centers to post that message. New York City tried to compel pro-life centers to post a notice. Uh, we fought back and succeeded in having it struck down on First Amendment grounds. California and Hawaii have passed laws requiring uh, the same, uh, that these pro-life centers inform their clients that they may be eligible for a free abortion. The ACLJ has filed lawsuits against those states, and we filed a cert petition with the Supreme Court in the California case and last November, the court agreed to hear the companion case uh, at, at the Supreme Court. So that filing deadline on the SCOTUS brief, the Supreme Court brief, is next week in the Crisis Pregnancy Center case or Pro-Life Pregnancy Center case. But we had an important victory out of Baltimore in the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. In 2009, Baltimore passed an ordinance requiring a limited service pregnancy center. That's what they call pro-life pregnancy centers. Oh, they don't do enough because they don't kill the babies. Okay, that, that's why they call them that. By the way, all those... Uh, Health clinics that Planned Parenthood runs that don't actually have mammogram machines? Do they call them limited health services clinics, I wonder? But anyways, uh, they wanted them to all post a disclaimer in, its, in their waiting rooms notifying clients that they do not provide or make referral for abortion or birth control services. They crafted the definition of an LSPC, a pregnancy center does that, that does not provide or refer for abortions. That's all. You had to be to not qualify. You don't kill babies, so you must uh, be. Uh, this is very targeted, and the fourth circuit decision uh, agreed with our position uh, quote a speech edict aimed directly at those pregnancy clinics that do not provide or refer for abortions is neither viewpoint nor content neutral especially in this context content-based regulation raises the specter that the government may effectively drive certain ideas or viewpoints from the marketplace 
We do not begrudge the city its viewpoint, but neither may the city disfavor only those who disagree. That's also what's at issue at the case at the United States Supreme Court. Lots of comments are coming in and a lot of statements coming in. A lot of people say the billboards are just plain wrong, plain and simple, regardless of which side of the issue you're on. Because this isn't one of those topics where a lot of people will say, you know, we're not necessarily we're pro-choice, but you know, it's, it's something that no one celebrates, no one is excited about, no right. one likes abortion. Uh, because at the end of the day, science has gotten to the point where you know what you're doing. It's not like this is not a hard decision for people, though we believe it's a wrong decision. Uh, what this is doing is flipping that and saying, no, 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 no. This is the best option. Abortion is the best option. It is necessary it is, you know, it is exactly is for me. It is a blessing. It is sacred. Uh, this is where it becomes, you know, almost you know, demonic is a weird word to use, but it does become that where we're not only tolerating it, which look, if you're on the other side of the issue on this, it's it's hard sometimes to see it, but I could be, okay, I understand where you have a, a legal uh, conundrum in your head, whether this should be legal or not, even if you have a personal problem with it. When you start celebrating it is where things turn and we're getting a lot of comments coming in a lot of stories specifically coming in we're gonna take some of those uh let's go ahead and do that let's yeah. go to kirk in san antonio texas you're on the air kirk thanks for calling hey kirk oh thanks for all you do my friend how are you today we're good i i just want to say you know thank you and let you know that uh i actually spoke at a rally in texas, uh for hb 938 which was a, was a bill to abolish abortion in texas unfortunately it never made it out of committee but i just want to you know uh, touch briefly about our story with you and uh 16 years ago my wife was pregnant with our son she became very sick lost 42 pounds in one month she was hospitalized most of that time eventually the doctor said there's nothing else he could do if we didn't terminate the pregnancy she would die Unfortunately, we took his advice, got it all set up, went to the abortion center the day of the procedure, and just before we were about to sign the death certificate to our son, God intervened and watched like that me and set out. You know, your story is one that we hear often. And first of all, you see, you walk into that clinic, the only option there is death. They're not trying to talk you out of it. You had your doctor. He may have been trying to give medical opinion. Look, and that's the kind of uh, choice that even pro-life legislation allows people to make is when you've got a decision where the life of the, of the mother is at risk, it is a decision for the couple to decide whether to move forward with the pregnancy, risking the mother's life uh, to have the child. And that's a decision that should be made by the parents, uh, not by the government. And, and that's why there's always that exception in pro-life legislation. No one is saying in that kind of life or death situation, which are rare, that you as the person should not be able to make the decision. It's why the procedure, which is so gruesome itself, abortion, exists for those limited circumstances where the mother's life really is at risk. Not health. We're not talking about health uh, exceptions. We're talking about mother's actual life. She could die. And so because of that chance, you talk to your doctor and then you make the decision. But many people make the decision and it's up to them to move forward with the pregnancy and they have a healthy child and the wife uh, does survive because science isn't perfect. Miracles do happen. Uh, medicine is not perfect either. Uh, but again, I, I, what it goes back to for me, Than, is... For everybody out there who thinks that even the abortionist um, who try to say sometimes it's not that we love the procedure or that we celebrate the procedure or what happens, it's that we we believe it's a, a necessary um, option that that uh, women must have. That's that doesn't uh, co coalesce with abortion is a blessing and abortion is sacred and abortion is a family value, which is the ad campaign they're running in Ohio. Right. And the evidence that what you're saying is true, Jordan, translates into their policy positions. I would just give you two examples. You had the caller, Kirk, talking about his experience going into a clinic. The abortion industry, Jordan, opposes giving his wife or any woman that seeks an abortion access to a free ultrasound, which is just more information to make a choice about the invasive procedure that they are going to undergo. They oppose that. The other thing, Jordan, and you'll see this next week in the House of Representatives, the House of Representatives is going to vote on a bill called the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. And it says if a woman goes in for abortion and the procedure fails or the baby is born during the process, then that baby who is living on the table is entitled to the rights of medical care, just like other in any other human being would be laying on that table. Jordan, the abortion industry is out in force against that bill today. So you talk about it being a religion. We're not talking about a belief in just access to a procedure, even though I have a difference of opinion on that. We are talking about a, an extreme position that is abortion on demand. And then, Jordan, in the event of a failed abortion and a living human being on the table, denying that baby medical care. That's how it 
extreme it's gotten. As our producer, Will, pointed out, it used to be that the pro- pro-choice, pro-abortion community would say that they only support safe, legal, and rare. That they wanted abortions to be rare, but safe and legal when they had to occur. Now, if you look at this ad campaign, uh, the abortion industry, because this is an ad campaign run by Ohio, Ohio's largest abortion clinic, but Planned Parenthood is tweeting all of this out, so they're endorsing this whole campaign. Now they're saying, the abortion industry, that abortion is safer than childbirth, normal and necessary. That's a lot different than safe, legal, and rare. Uh, safer than childbirth, normal, and necessary. If you can get involved, we have a petition to stop the shutdown of pro-life pregnancy centers. We are in all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court right now. You can sign that petition at aclj.org. So get involved in the fight back against big abortion. Stand with the pro-life pregnancy centers doing that incredible work. ACLJ.org. Sign the petition today as we head to the U.S. Supreme Court. We'll be right back. The stage is set at the U.S. Supreme Court, where we are battling big abortion. At the American Center for Law and Justice, it's our sacred duty to defend unborn babies. We have two massive pro-life cases pending at the Supreme Court. One could save countless babies. The other could devastate the abortion industry. Now, Big Abortion is trying to force pro-life pregnancy centers to promote free taxpayer-funded abortions or be shut down. In that case, we have just filed one of the most important pro-life briefs ever at the Supreme Court to save babies. It's a critical time in the fight for life, and we could not be on the front lines at the Supreme Court without your generous support. Stand with the ACLJ now. Support the pro-life work of the American Center for Law and Justice. It's easy to make that happen. Go online, make a gift at aclj.org. Thank you for your support. Folks, we put together a documentary through ACLJ Films. You'll find those on our website at aclj.org. This is part of a documentary. It's called Abortion, Inc. Let's take a look at that trailer right now. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. I'm proud to be here today speaking on behalf of Planned Parenthood. I think what we need to look at is the business of abortion. It's around a half a billion dollars that we're giving Planned Parenthood. An organization is chopping up children and selling the body parts. They've been caught red-handed. I didn't want anyone to see me. I didn't want anyone to know. We really did treat women like second-class citizens. Planned Parenthood really is Abortion, Inc. They believe that they're doing a service. Well, that child is in a surgical tray. I would tell you, that child has value. I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world. That was our trailer for our ACLJ film and documentary, Abortion, Inc. Let's get right to the phones. All right, yeah, let's just go in order of those on hold. Tommy in Washington, online five. Tommy, you're on the air. Hi, Tommy. Hello from a proud member of the ACLJ. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. You know, something just occurred to me as I'm listening to the program this morning. It, it, you know, it's such a strange thing to see Planned Parenthood, a very political organization, touting uh, a, religious, a religious angle in its billboards. Yep. And it just makes me wonder, uh, do they see the writing on the wall, possibly, that abortion rights, so-called rights in yep. America, their position, is weakening? And um, because of the work of the ACLJ and others, 
our constitutionally supported freedom of religion is being strengthened. Yeah, it's you know what I think, uh, Tammy. They are. They do experience. Remember when this, when they won Roe versus Wade for many decades, people just ignored the issue. It wasn't proper to talk about abortion, you know, at the table or on radio or in the news. And so they had won. I mean, no one talked about it. They got this great business where they were, you know, uh, making money and totally unregulated at the federal or state level. And in fact, they were getting money from federal and state governments. And then people started wising up to what was happening. And I got to give a lot of credit to the Catholic Church who first spoke out about this. Uh, and then the Protestants uh, came on board as well. And then it got past just religious people to the scientific community because the uh, technology surrounding childbirth, the ultrasounds, the ability to see uh, the, the growth of a child in the womb has changed and will be even increased 10, 20 years from now. I can't imagine what they're going to be able uh, to show um, uh, a couple having a child. So that, in fact, if you see the ultrasound, which, by the way, they try to prevent people from seeing um, today, you know it's a human being. It's not a grouping of cells. It's a human being. The person who died at this abortion clinic in Ohio uh, was someone who was considered a late-term abortion. 19.4 weeks is what they called it. I mean, they came up with some number to keep it right under the line of probably being illegal in that state or needing different technology. Uh, that that means uh, you were five uh, five months into the pregnancy. pregnancy. Any of you who had a child recently or a grandchild and seen those pictures at five months know you are killing a child. A human being is in that womb. Uh, it's small, but it is there, and it is yeah. forming, and it is uh, really starting to t- take shape at that point. And, uh, and again, this abortion clinic out there brazenly with his ads has killed women uh, through the abortion procedure. Brittany in Jackson, Mississippi, you're on the air. Thanks. Hi. Hi, Brittany. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of information that I've real that I found out from my friend who had an abortion. Yep. Um, and she opened up to me with details about that day. So she went through a breakup, and she was pretty far along, like 16 or 17 weeks, not even sure if she was pro-life, pro-abortion, never even thought much about it. But as we all know, pregnant women are emotional. And so she went through a breakup and within a day found herself already on her way to the abortion clinic. And then when they got there, they sedated her. And so she just remembers being extremely loopy. So they want you to not be able to back out at the last minute. No. And and so I just can't get over. And she said she remembers even having somewhat of a feeling when she was walking in the building. There were some um, pro-life supporters outside, and it was raining, and they had umbrellas. And, you know, they were just trying. They weren't, like, yelling or anything, but they were just kind of looking at her like, please, you know, don't go in there. And they were on the other side of a fence. And so she was having some thoughts about backing out. Her heart was pounding, and then as soon as they get her in there, they they want to get they want to go ahead and get you sedated. Yep. And, and you know why, Brittany? They're able to do that. They're totally unregulated compared to most medical facilities. I mean, uh, when, when they had to meet ambulatory care service centers to perform these procedures, they fought those in court and won because of the abortion distortion in courts. I mean, Than, that is the biggest issue: is that they get away with f- this kind of almost forced abortion if you walk through the doors voluntarily. Once you walk through the doors, they are they are pressuring you. I mean, you basically have to run out on your own. Um, and it, sometimes it gets physical. That's in one of our documentaries where they try to hold the woman down, say, no, 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 you're making the wrong decision. Right. Um, uh, again, uh, they get away with this because of the lack of regulation or the regulations that have been held to be by our you know judges and judicial system as unconstitutional. We would never allow normal medical facilities to operate this way. It's like an assembly line. That's why the abortion is safe slogan is so offensive. In that situation you talked about where the woman died in this clinic, Jordan, that clinic almost certainly did not have hospital admitting privileges because they have fought that requirement every step of the way. So if you're a woman that seeks an abortion and then is suffering and maybe dying, that clinic in many, many cases, Jordan, can admit you to a hospital for life-saving care. All right, let's take Chris. Yep, let's go to Chris in Nevada. Thanks for holding Chris. Is any government money being used to fund the advertising campaign in Cleveland? Yeah, I can't answer it 100%. could be state funds. I don't know how Ohio's set up right now. They have pretty strict laws, but they're always in court about that. Federally, you would not be able to use the money that even goes to Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry uh, from our taxpayer dollars to promote abortion. So these ads would not be able to be paid for by, but as you said, indirectly, keyword, absolutely. Because when you pay the biggest chunk of their budget through our taxpayer dollars, it allows them to have extra money on the side to put these ads up. 
So they can segregate and say, well, see, we used our money that we raised or made by doing abortions to put these ads up because we're getting 500 plus million dollars a year uh, uh, to, for everything else. So we've got the money around. So, yeah, indirectly uh, changing out dollars here. This the, you are the reason why we are the reason why as taxpayers, they have the resources to put these billboards up. Absolutely. We do only have a minute left. Maybe we can take one last quick call. Let's go to Kimberly in Chesapeake, Virginia. A uh, quick statement here, Kimberly. Yes, I just want to say I am an advocate now for the CPC, and I just want to say that I had an abortion myself, and it's a, one of the things that I wish I'd never done. I was forced to do it, but it stayed with me mentally for 27 years later, but I want every listener to please, I plead and beg you to support the CBC in your area mm-hmm. because I, people, women suffer from lack of knowledge and not knowing that they have other support systems there. They're thinking the one that's forcing them is all they have. But to know that there's so much more help out there, we, they need the funding to make that happen. So They do. We, I go around the country raising money for those uh, pregnancy centers. My dad does as well. And we also are fighting for them in court right now because, Kimberly, they're under attack. Many states are trying to force them to have abortion, re- give abortion referrals. How sick is that? We're finding it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. That's how bold and aggressive the abortion industry is being. We're fighting back. Folks, today on the show, you've got the information. You know we're battling this in court right now, all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Briefs are being filed because there is an attempt to force pro-life pregnancy centers, to force them to refer uh, people for abortions. People are going to a pro-life pregnancy center, and these states are trying to force those pro-life pregnancy centers to say you've got to tell people where they can get abortion and where they can get abortion services. Uh, totally against their purpose and calling and what they do. And it's targeted uh, speech, focusing on a certain viewpoint. It's unconstitutional. We fought it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The briefs are being filed there now. You can take action as well by signing our petition. There's two ways to do so. You can go to ACLJ.org and sign the petition. Stop the shutdown of pro-life pregnancy centers. That's at ACLJ.org. You can also sign the petition by calling our toll-free number right now, 877 877- 989-2255. That's 877-989-2255. Or go to aclj.org and sign that petition today. The stage is set at the U.S. Supreme Court, where we are battling big abortion. At the American Center for Law and Justice, it's our sacred duty to defend unborn babies. We have two massive pro-life cases pending at the Supreme Court. One could save countless babies. The other could devastate the abortion industry. Now, Big Abortion is trying to force pro-life pregnancy centers to promote free taxpayer-funded abortions or be shut down. In that case, we have just filed one of the most important pro-life briefs ever at the Supreme Court to save babies. It's a critical time in the fight for life, and we could not be on the front lines at the Supreme Court without your generous support. Stand with the ACLJ now. Support the pro-life work of the American Center for Law and Justice. It's easy to make that happen. Go online, make a gift at aclj.org. Thank you for your support.